Yeah. I've got one thing for you to do. Okay. <laughs> that was creepy. Yeah, well, yours is creepy too. Hi, guys, I'm being Mayo. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we have a special cruise director of the Mardi Gras, Lee Mason. Hey. So how are you today? I'm really good. I'm really excited to be here <laughs> and to honored to be interviewed by you. Thank you. So first of all, how long have you been a cruise director for? Ooh, I've been a cruise director for almost six years for Carnival and eight years total. So I started out with a, a small English cruise line before I came to work for Carnival. And I was a cruise director with them. And then when I moved over to work for Carnival, I started right away as cruise director at the very, very end of 2016. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I'm guessing you, you really love your job as cruise director? I love my job as cruise director. <laughs> it's the best job on the ship. And I even tell the captain that. <laughs> what is the craziest thing that happened and you ever seen happen on one of your ships? On one of my ships? The craziest thing? Oh, there's a lot of crazy things that happen on the cruise ship. <laughs> Okay, I've had a lot of accidents with my wardrobe. I was dancing once on the Carnival Splendor, on the bar in the atrium lobby, and we're all dancing, 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 and I danced that hard that I ripped my shirt right down the back, like the Incredible Hulk rips out of his clothes, apart from I'm a lot less muscular. That's not the worst one. The worst one was on the Carnival Breeze. Oh, no. And we were having a dancing competition. Oh, God. <laughs> and you know when people, they drop down low, we say you drop it like it's hot. Yeah. Well, it, was, it must have been far too hot because I <laughs> dropped it down and my trousers split from the very front right under to the very, very back. And I had to walk from the back of the ship to the front of the ship, the cruise director, practically wearing a skirt. That's pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy. But there's lots of things that happen on a cruise ship. Chris the Flying Scotsman is a cruise director. Yeah. And next week you are taking over as cruise director. Yes. Are you excited about that too? I'm so excited about that. I've been watching him for four weeks. So I've been watching and getting ready and preparing. And now it's finally here. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm a little bit nervous but I'm on like the positive side of nervous. So the fun side of nervous rather than like being terrified and worried. Mm. I just want to do a good job. So about that. Yeah. Who do you think is the better cruise director, Chris or you? Okay. You want the honest answer? <laughs> yeah. I think Chris is an incredible cruise director and he does things that I can't do. And I think it's very important that you respect people that can do things that, that maybe you can't, right? Chris is a rock star. He sings, he, he has a one man show and he's so entertaining. And when I'm cruising, I really like watching his show. And I don't do that. I walk around, I'm nice to people. I make friends with everybody, but I'm just me. I would say, I think Chris is probably equal because we're both special in our own way okay. but if I had to cruise and watch somebody I'd cruise with Chris that's sweet of you maybe we already asked this but how do you feel about being cruise director of the biggest and the best ship on the carnival cruise oh you haven't asked this because I'm excited to do it right but for the last six years that I've been working with carnival I've had my eyes on the big new ships and I've really wanted to work on the biggest, newest ship in the company. And I was new, so I had to start out on the smaller ships. And my ships have grown the longer I've spent with the company. And this is the first time that I'm getting to work on the ship that is the flagship, so the newest ship in the company. So this is a huge honor for me. I just came from the, car uh, from the Carnival Panorama over in California, and that was the flagship for the longest time. And then when I went to work on there, they brought Mardi Gras out, so it wasn't the flagship anymore. But I'd been wanting to do this for so long. 
and it's it's really exciting for me that I'm finally getting a chance. Well, congratulations! And also during the Mario Kart like party there, yeah, like, in the main section, uh, like right right where the Palm Deck restaurant mm -hmm. is, they're bringing the Mario Kart into the Mario Kart. Mardi Gras on Mardi Gras, right? Yeah. We had a full parade. You saw that? Yeah, I saw. Oh, it's so fun. So fun. So so fun. What preparation did it take for a cruise director to do what it needs to do on a ship, especially one of this massive size? Because <sighs> remember, it's the biggest ship on Carnival. Yeah, it's taken a lot of preparation. So normally, when we take over from each other on a ship, we call that a handover. And I've had a handover with Chris before on the Carnival Dream, and we had one week handover. But because this ship is so new and so big, we've had four weeks. So it's been a lot of preparation. Because the cruise director, while we do the shows and we introduce like the guest entertainers and we, we throw parties, we're also responsible for looking after the fun squad and not just you know, scheduling them and telling them where to be, but also training them and coaching them and helping them grow to maybe one day be cruise directors as well. This ship has got the biggest fun squad of all of the carnival ships, which means that there's a lot of people to meet and a lot of people to get to know and a lot of people to schedule. So there's a lot more fun, but there's also a lot more paperwork. <laughs> so I've been learning the paperwork and I've been learning the fun. How big was the paperwork? Is it like this or is this? <laughs> well, fortunately for me, it's in a computer, so it's like this. Oh. <laughs> but if we printed it all out, oh yeah, bigger than that, it'd be like, and that's just a week. You've been on many Carnival International cruises, like yeah. Asia, Australia, mm -hmm. right? I have. And more. Yeah. What is your favorite cruise itinerary? Oh my word. Now that is a <laughs> difficult question, right? Because... You can, name, you can name some of them, it's okay. Well, it depends what you like or what you want to see on your cruise. Because when I went to Alaska, that was really special for me because I'm from England, it's a long, long way away. So going to Alaska and getting to see that landscape and the wildlife, people from England don't go to Alaska a lot, right? So that's a really special trip and I got to do that cruising. Going to Australia, that's on the other side of the world. So I really enjoyed working in Australia and their ports of call are very, very different to the ports that we've been to this cruise because this cruise going to the Caribbean, they're ready to welcome cruise ships and you know, they're really busy and they cater to tourists. Whereas some of the ports in Australia, they're what I would say, very local. So you feel like you're really experiencing these, these ports of call and you get a taste of the local culture and what there is there rather than it being like a little tourist spot, if that makes sense. So your favorite itinerary is Alaska? Oh, you're really pressuring me. Question seven. Yeah. I'm always this, but I'm hungry. <laughs> Where's the best place to eat on the ship? I've only been here for four weeks, so I haven't had the chance to try all of the food. So maybe you've tried food that I haven't had yet. I'm really excited about Shaq's Big Chicken. Ooh, I haven't tried that yet. Because it's new. This ship is one of the very few ships in the Carnival fleet that's going to have that, that restaurant. And it's fried chicken sandwiches or chicken tenders. It's not the healthiest food in the world, <laughs> but it's delicious. Yeah, it is very delicious. What's your favorite food on this ship? Uh, pretty, I like, I always eat like the burgers and stuff because they're uh -huh. always good. And um, like the bun, the patty, the cheese, yeah. and the bun. <laughs> Just you keep it plain, plain and simple, cheeseburger. I always crack up at the very end, but I always do this. I have the best patty. <laughs> the best patty is the Krabby Patty. The best patty is the Krabby Patty. <laughs> it's that SpongeBob. Yeah. I love your sense of humor. I love yours. I think you should do that all the time. <laughs> I used to do things that my mom didn't like. I, I don't think I can do it right now. I used to, I used to speak in a silly voice. <clears throat> also, I haven't done this since I was maybe your age. I used to talk on this voice. Like Stitch. And my, like Stitch. Like Stitch. 
Yes. And my mum wouldn't, she wouldn't talk to me if I was using that voice. <laughs> Ever. And there's also one thing that my mum doesn't like with my eyes. Oh, what do you do with your eyes? <gasps> that is creepy. <laughs> I've got one thing for you to do. Okay. Right. To do this. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that was creepy. Yeah, well yours is creepy too. So you put your finger by your eye and then your thumb by your mouth and you just pinch it and you smile. Hello. Hello. <laughs> your mum's going to love that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Question number eight, the last one. Okay. What is your secret talent? My secret talent. I'm, I may or may not have heard one. Then. Really? What do you think my secret talent is? Mm, I don't know, photography? I love photography. <laughs> That's not really a secret though. I tell everyone that I love photography. I love taking photographs and I love making videos. I really like taking photographs of people, <laughs> like portraits. I do. And I take pictures of all of my friends and the places that I go visit. B, I don't know how you were able to get time for us to do this interview. And I just want to say thank you so, so much for being a few minutes with us today. Well, thank you for letting me be a part of your video. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be famous on the internet. Oh, you will. Hi, Mom. <laughs> and if you want to come to Carnival Mardi Gras, go to cruisecruise.com to book your next Carnival vacation. Yes. And also give this video a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, share this video, and comment down below to show love to our super awesome cruise director, Lee Mason. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is Amaya Singh and Lee Mason signing off on the massively fun Mardi Gras. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. But wait, can you go back to that one part again? For the last six years that I've been working with Carnival, I've had my eyes on the big new ships and I've really wanted to work on the biggest, newest ship in the company. Breaking news! Carnival Cruise Line just announced that Lee Mason will be the official cruise director of the biggest, newest flagship, the Carnival Celebration, setting sail November 2022. This is nuts. I repeat, this is not a handover. This is Lee Mason's dream coming true and ours too. Congratulations, Lee Mason, on an incredible honor. It is so well deserved, and we cannot wait to sail with you on the Carnival Celebration real soon. Selfie of a silly face. Yeah. Can we do that? Uh, sure. Let's yes. do it. Oh, I've wait, got my phone. Here we go. Oh, I'm using it. <laughs> Ready? Chicken. Chicken. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just started with that ending. I love that. My mom said I'd do a different outro, so. Chicken. 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 <laughs> Whatever comes out. I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant! It's not just a cruise ship, it's a fun ship! Yeah.